welcome to this installment of Bergeron Briefs. Um, I'm trying to do something a little different this year. Um, usually, all of my shows are interviews with people that you really need to be knowing in the community, and they're meant to supplement the uh, Elder Law presentations that I do at the Ashland Senior Center. But I decided this year that I would, I would take one show and talk about the cluster of issues that I most commonly hear from people when they're first walking in and they want to talk to me. Um, in the next two segments, uh, which are the, the total of these is 30 minutes, the ex next two 10 minute segments are going to talk about people who are coming in because they're in crisis, especially because they've got, you know, one of them, one spouse, or if they're single, um, um, has memory loss, may need nursing home care, may need to qualify for mass health, and they're all freaked out because they don't know what to do. Um, and I talk to a lot of folks in those situations. The other group of folks that I talk to, though, at least as many, are folks who are trying to plan against that emergency. And so typically they walk into my door and they say, Mr. Bergeron, I think I need a trust. Um, and I'll ask, so uh, they'll say, well, I'll say, why? They'll say, well, all of our friends have trusts and, and I think we need one. And so one of the reasons they may want that trust is because of, of the concern about maybe qualifying for mass health. But for, I want to start off by talking about the other one. Um, many folks, if they are not concerned about um, needing to protect their assets in the event that somebody needs nursing home care, um, may still want to have a trust for a different reason. That is to avoid probate. This, this 10 or 20 years ago was probably the most common reason why folks would come in and talk to me if they were older and they wanted to, to basically try to structure at their assets, they weren't worried about nursing home care. Um, this, this is especially true if they're younger. Um, and, but they wanted to make sure that their kids didn't have to go through the hassle, the time and the expense of the probate process after they died because they wanted to make sure the assets ultimately went to their kids. And what I would tell folks in that case is, well, first of all, if you're married, um, and then chances are you own everything jointly with your spouse. And if that's the case, then when one of you dies, there will be no probate process because probate only applies to assets that you own that are just in your name at the time of you di that you die. So if, if you're a husband and the, your wife and you own your house jointly and you have bank accounts that are joint um, and one of you dies, the legal consequence of that death is that upon your death, your interest in that property evaporates and your spouse becomes the sole owner. So really, if you're coming to talk to me or to any lawyer about probate avoidance, and you're a couple, what that lawyer should probably be telling you is that this planning may be a little early, that you can certainly structure that now if you want to in order to avoid probate when the second of the two of you dies, but you need to understand that you could also wait until one of you has died, the survivor has become the sole owner of the assets, and then at that point, um, that, that survivor may want to structure things um, so as to make sure that, that he or she still controls the assets while he's alive or she's alive, but, make, but that following that person's death, those assets will immediately go to the kids. Well, one way of doing that, uh, as between husband and wife, is that you could, if you're single, uh, either because you're you know, unmarried or widowed or divorced, you could, um, uh, if you want to leave your assets to your kids and you want to avoid probate, you could simply um, put your kids on, you, you, on your assets with you jointly. You could deed um, your house to yourself and your children jointly. You could put them on your bank accounts. Typically, people don't want to do that, though, because they are concerned that in the short run, in that situation, um, they may be opening those assets up to liability because if one of your children gets sued, well now they, own, they jointly own your house with you or they jointly own your bank account with you so a creditor of theirs could grab some of it. Or if one of your kids gets divorced, um, it may be that that interest in your house uh, that they own ends up being part of that child's divorce settlement and you don't want that. Um, so if you're trying to avoid that, um, the most common way to do it is by creating a trust, a revocable and amendable trust, naming yourself as the trustee for the benefit of yourself and your children, uh, saying that it is revocable and amendable so that you can change the rules of this trust anytime, um, but saying that at the time of your death, a new trustee will be appointed, typically one of your kids, and that child at that point 
could turn around immediately and sell all of the assets and divide them up, the proceeds up among the kids. And those assets would not be subject to the probate process, which means they would not be subject to the time and delay involved in going through probate. And they also would not be subject to the claims of any creditors. So that's one reason why someone might need a trust. The other reason why people talk to me about these trusts, though, is they say, they, oh, they really want to make sure their assets are protected in the event that one of them needs to qualify for mass health later on because one of them needs nursing home care. So briefly, if you are a, a husband and wife and you're worried about that, as I'm going to explain in a later segment, one of these three segments, you don't have to do that now. You don't have to put any of your assets into trust. You don't have to convey them away to some irrevocable trust or to anybody else. Because if one of you needs nursing home care, you can immediately qualify by simply transferring all of your assets at that time to your spouse, who is healthy, and then having that spouse take some other steps. What you might want to do if you want, that, if you want protection against the possibility that one of you dies and the other one then needs to qualify for mass health is you might want to change your will so as to say that upon your death, all the assets that would have gone to that surviving spouse will instead go and trust for the benefit of that surviving spouse. If you do that, and make then any of the assets that are owned by the first spouse to die will immediately be safe for the benefit of the surviving spouse. Only if you are single and haven't taken that precaution and own assets that might otherwise need to be counted if you needed to qualify for mass health, would you be in the situation where you might want to, if you want to protect those assets, transfer them out of your name now to your children or to anybody else um, and wait five years and five years after you've done that transfer those assets will no longer be counted in the event that you need to qualify for mass health. If you're uncomfortable simply transferring the assets to your children because once again you may be concerned that if you do that they could be subject to liability, um, they could be subject to divorce proceedings. In, or you might have multiple children and you want to make sure that these assets are controlled by perhaps the child that you trust the most to handle all of this. In that situation, and in that situation only, would you want to create an irrevocable trust, probably naming that trusted child as the trustee for the benefit of himself and all those other children, and then transfer assets to that trustee. Typically that trust will say that that trustee has the discretion at any time to distribute any of those assets to himself or herself or to any of those other children so that if you needed money later after you had transferred the assets to that trustee and that trustee agreed to it, that trustee could simply make a distribution from the trust to himself or herself or to any one of the other children and then that child could turn around and transfer the assets back to you. Now as you can see from what I just said, it is that fact that, the that you would have to convince your trustee to transfer those assets to someone and have those assets get transferred back to you uh, that keeps many people from doing these kinds of trusts. Because they're, the, if in the short run, they still feel healthy, um, they may say, well, you know, I really don't want to lose control of all of these assets. Um, uh, if, they are not, if they have uh, memory loss or dementia and are now trying to protect the assets, Typically, it's too late to transfer assets to an irrevocable trust because they need protection um, sooner than five years from now. Uh, and when you transfer assets to this irrevocable trust, you have to wait for five years. Um, but that is the only situation where you want to be transferring assets to an irrevocable trust. So I wanted to give you that overview of why people may want to consider trusts why people often don't need to create an irrevoc irrevocable trust and lose control of their assets. And then I want you to watch the next two segments so you can understand better what you would do in that crisis situation if you hadn't done this kind of planning. Thank you very much, and I hope that you enjoyed these, these segments. If you do, uh, or if you don't, I'd appreciate if you could let me know. Because if you do, um, then I may structure further later Bergeron Brief shows to talk about some of these other legal issues. Thank you very much.